Join us for this week's On the Conservation Front as we dive deeper into critical water issues facing the state. Florida Sportsman has been leading the fight on the conservation front lines for over 50 years. Let's join Miami Waterkeeper Rachel Silverstein to discuss a bad dredging project that killed marine life and coral in the Port of Miami. Rachel, as Miami Waterkeeper, where are your territorial boundaries and what's your primary responsibility? So Miami Waterkeeper is a nonprofit focused on ensuring everyone's right to water that's safe for swimming, drinking, and fishing in Miami-Dade and Broward counties. Like a private citizen, Miami Waterkeeper has the ability to sue an environmental polluter. Recently, you sued the Army Corps engineers over a botched Miami port dredging project. What happened? Yeah, so a lot of people don't know that actually every citizen has a right uh, to bring polluters to court to enforce their right to water that's safe for swimming, drinking, and fishing. And those are rights given to us by Congress under the Clean Water Act. And when they passed some of our most important environmental laws, they actually gave citizens the right to step into the role of an enforcement agency and to defend their own rights to clean water or to protect the local environment and species. In 2014, uh, we found out that during a deepening and widening project of the Port of Miami shipping channel, which bisects the Florida Reef Tract, um, there was a lot of sediment being kicked up and was burying the reef uh, for a very long distance around uh, where the dredging project was taking place. And we found that it was in violation of both the Endangered Species Act and the permit uh, that was issued from the State Department of Environmental Protection, or DEP. So at the time, we did everything we could to try to talk to the Army Corps about the damage that was being observed and witnessed. Um, and we got no traction. They weren't willing to stop the project. They weren't willing to change what they were doing or to start doing the monitoring that they were required to do. So we had no choice but to file an Endangered Species Act lawsuit and to bring them to court and also to file an emergency injunction to try to get the staghorn corals, which are listed under the Endangered Species Act, and as a species we've already lost 98% of uh, from Florida, to get protection for them and to get them rescued before the project continued. Rachel, why are staghorn corals so important? Staghorn corals are so important because they used to be the dominant coral in this region, but unfortunately we've already lost over 98% of this coral and we're, we're fighting to save the last 2% now. So they were actually the first corals listed as threatened under the Endangered Species Act in 2008 and there's been a real effort to conserve them and to bring them back to restore them both for the coral animal itself but also for the fish populations that it supports. Rachel, have we had closure on the Miami dredging uh, lawsuit? So we haven't had total closure on the Miami dredging lawsuit yet, but we're getting closer. We have actually settled our lawsuit and we were able to secure the restoration of over 10,000 staghorn corals in Miami-Dade County over the next three years. So that's gonna be a big boon to the local population of staghorn corals and hopefully the fish populations that live there. But we're still waiting for an official record of how much damage was done from this project from the state of Florida. And they need to make that determination quickly and then make a plan to restore those corals. The same week that we settled our lawsuit, the Port of Miami actually announced that they didn't dredge deeply enough in the project the first time, and now they need to go back and dredge again. So now with this new proposed dredging to correct the fact that apparently they didn't dredge deeply enough the first time, we have to go through this whole process again and make sure that they're not continuing to damage the reef this time around. Who primarily dropped the ball on this project, the core or the contractor? I think the reality is with these really um, politically motivated, very high dollar projects. Once the train has left the station, no matter what's happening with the environment or no matter what kind of damage is being reported or how out of compliance they are with the permits and the laws, it's almost impossible to rein it back in. And a lot of the enforcement agencies and agencies like the Army Corps, who were, who were the only ones that really had the power to say, shut it down for environmental reasons and never did once, I think are primarily holding the responsibility as well as the actual company doing the dredging who was cutting corners to save money and ended up uh, you know, dumping a lot of this sediment and sand on the reef that buried the corals. In the vicinity of the Port Everglades project, which has been delayed by your lawsuit, 
Is the coral coverage as extensive as it was off Miami? There's probably even higher numbers of staghorn corals at risk from that project. We sued the Army Corps over that project as well because they failed to learn lessons um, and to incorporate what we call the best available science from what we now know to be the case about these dredging projects and their impacts on reefs after what happened in Miami. So they had to go back and redo all of their environmental assessments as a result of that lawsuit and that project's already been delayed now by four years. So we've had a lot of support from the local fishing community as well, who really love to fish in that area. And they understand that if the reefs are gone, then we're gonna lose all the creatures and critters and fish and other things that live in and around the area as well. What can anglers and divers do to stay engaged on the dredging projects and other campaigns you're involved with? So the angling community is really critical for us because you can be our eyes on the water. And we can't be everywhere at once, so we'd love to know what kind of conditions you're seeing while you're out on the water, whether those be fish kills, algae blooms, illegal dumping, or in the case of the dredging project, large plumes of sediment that you're seeing. Um, in the case of Port of Miami, we had anglers report to us that they were seeing plumes of sediment stretching for miles away from the project. And we had someone report to us um, a new snook spawning aggregation in the Port Everglades shipping channel. So that was really important because we were able to report that to the agencies and then ensure that that population is protected and maybe even dredging stopped during spawning period so that we don't harm the snook populations. Rachel, what's the best way for viewers to contact you directly? So we're really easy to contact. Our website is www.miamiwaterkeeper.org. Uh, you can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, and we post multiple times a day. There's various ways to get involved, events, and you can always contact us and let us know what you're seeing on the water.